Did you see the comments from the defensive lineman Moro Ojomo talking about the culture of Texas? Yep, and the NIL deal. Uh, well, NIL and just everything. Here, I'll, I'll read some of these quotes because, boy, this was just glorious. Absolutely glorious. Uh, some of these quotes that made their way into the media availability, which <laughs> I'm so curious, where in the world was the SID? Like, who who was supposed to shut this down? Uh, he said, they're 18 to 22-year-olds that want to chase women, want to chase money, want to chase alcohol, and they don't see the future. They're very distracted by what's in front of them. It's such a hard thing, especially guys that haven't been in a winning culture. That's why it's very easy for a lot of these powerhouses to keep going because it's established. The new guys just come in and they're like, oh shit, this is how we have to do it. Oh shit, this is what we do. It's just so much more difficult. He said, they always talk about coming here and changing stuff. Coming here, changing stuff. It's like it's ingrained. You're uprooting what? 10 years of shit that's just been let go and go by? They're more worried about being on 6th Street than like balling and making $50 million is crazy as hell. I don't know why. Uh, he he talks on and on and on about NIL deals, about guys don't want to spend time together, uh, just everything. And how, which obviously, I think the coaches would agree with this. Now, Sark came out and said, yo, he's not going to talk to y'all again for a little while. Uh, and his explanation yep. behind that was, if if you're going to be a good teammate, then you're going to say this stuff in the locker room. You're not going to come out and say it to the press, right? You're going to get this stuff fixed in-house first. But I don't think Sarkeesian disagrees with any of it that he said at all. Do you? No. The The issue is this, this looks – I think this looks bad on the coaching staff and Sark because if you had the culture – of we handle these things in house and he should feel comfortable or should have been given some type of major leadership position to say these things to kind of whip these kids into shape or to make his feelings known in the locker room, then it never comes out like this. Obviously, he felt like whatever was happening in the locker room wasn't getting taken care of. Where are the coaches at? Where are the other coaches at? Where are the other leaders at? And and if he feels like he's alone on the island, then, 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 yeah, he's going to go to social media or, or, or to, to any other media folks he can and say these things. Um, it, it's real easy to say we should handle these things in-house. Well, well, the reason he didn't is because, obviously, that opportunity wasn't afforded to him. Yeah, that is, uh, that is an interesting take on that. I, I had thought about it a little bit, but I, part of me wonders if he was doing – the same thing that he has seen other coaches do, right? Nick Saban is notorious for this. He tells the kids, he tells the kids, and then he uses the media uh, as a way to get his message across. The problem is, if you are one of those players, uh, you I don't know that your message gets across that much better. And as a matter of fact, it could, if you're saying it to the press, even after you may have said it to the guys on the team, going out and taking that stuff public can certainly put a divide in the locker room, right? And that's where that would become a little bit of an issue. Uh, he did talk quite a bit about uh, uh, players being distracted from football and their focus is on crumbs instead of the whole cake. Uh, NIL makes your mind turn its focus to more social media and more exposure. Uh, like all these different, I mean, he went, this guy went on for 20-something minutes. And what I don't understand is, again, where is the SID that is like, all right, yeah, guys, we got to wrap this thing up, like looking at his watch or whatever, like, hey, you know, uh, we got one more question, like that's it. Um, I I just don't know how that is allowed to continue on. And it's a big reason why you see coaches all over the country that limit these media, uh, media availabilities, right? Like it's not that he said anything that was wrong or or against what the coaches actually think or anything like that. It is it, sometimes maybe you try and save the kid from himself, like, we appreciate the honesty, obviously, because it gives us stuff to talk about. Because we always want these guys to be honest as opposed to giving us the, the same old line, right? But in this situation, I just wonder why there was nobody there to, like, walk this guy back a little bit. Hey, you sure you want to talk about all this in front of these media guys? <laughs> like, are you sure that you're wanting to do this? It just seemed like such a weird uh, event, a, a weird thing to happen and don't get me wrong, this guy is incredibly smart. He's brilliant. Uh, 
really smart guy. Like, he's going to graduate with honors and everything else. Like, he's been there for four years. He is an experienced dude. But this just seemed odd to have this happen in April, right? Do you agree with that? Uh, I mean, I guess. It, it, it might, like I said, I, the reason he doesn't, he goes to the media and, and he goes out outside the locker room is because he, he just didn't feel like he was going to be hurt inside the locker room. And that's because the culture is what it is. And if there's a divide, do you think the people that are so embedded in doing the things that he's complaining about doing, do you think that one conversation in a locker room is going to just instantly whip them into shape and they're just going to fall in line? Because I feel like he just feels like I'm done with these bastards. I'm out. I don't want to be a part of this. This ain't the Texas football I signed up to play, and I want to play with tough guys who want to be a part of a team. And and you know, uh, th- this ain't it. And why would I go into that locker room and say those things? And once again, I put I put so much of that on Sark that has to at some point in time. Where are the coaches? So well, you're I mean, worried you remember- about where are the people controlling him? Where are the people? Uh, corralling him and keeping him from saying these things. Where are the people not getting these damn guys in line? That's you remember Bo Davis last year. There was the video that came out uh, late in the season. Uh, Bo Davis just mfing people on the on the bus because kids are laughing after they got blown out somewhere, right? Uh, and he yeah. didn't understand why they didn't care and all this. And uh, I, I do wonder if if some of that they're still trying to work through. Right, and that, obviously, I'm not a Sark apologist by any stretch of the imagination. I I told you immediately why I thought that he would not be successful at Texas. Um, it's, you know, this is just such a a strange, strange situation there uh, that I am I don't know how they can fix this. Like, yeah, I, I just but they need it. I, I'm gonna tell you this. So, like, I know there's a lot of people that don't like Brian Kelly. That's fine. Yeah. Brian Kelly's not the guy's gift to the greatest coaches in the world. All right. He's got major flaws, whatever. He's, he's, he's now a pretty my good coach, coach though. <laughs> but let me let me tell you what I've I've witnessed him do at LSU. Okay, for the last four years at LSU, they have had a major, major, major culture issue. Okay, it was guys not practicing hard, not not showing up on time, not taking care of their studies, like the very little, very basic things. They were winning football games because they had just un explainably good talent okay and they had good coaching but they didn't have any strong leadership and culture at all all right or if they did it was was through the players themselves right it was through the players themselves that's fine yeah brian kelly has come in and he has been working hard to address this texas has to has to has to has to find someone who will come in and who will lead in cult, like who will change the culture of Texas? That's the problem. Is they need someone to come in and completely overhaul the culture. It's. I'll tell you this. We've talked about this ad nauseum. Uh, the culture at Texas may be unchangeable. Like it really might be because there are so many people around that program, uh, just boosters, people with money, etc. A strong AD has to come in and whip that shit into shape, and a strong and hire a strong head coach that's going to tell us all those boosters that listen. This ain't your country club, okay? You you don't dictate things here. Do you want Texas to be great, or do you want to be famous here? Yeah, because you can't yeah. have both. That is a good point. That is a good point. We've we've talked about it a lot. I'm curious. Uh, I'm curious what it's going to be I, like. To say it's unfixable, I just disagree because somebody. Somebody will be strong enough to walk in the door and say, "I win or lose, it's all going to be on me." But it's going to be on me, damn it! And if I have to take the losses, and I have to take the arrows, and I have to take the bullets, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to at least take them my way, all right? If I have to take all this shit doing it your way and doing the things you say that are right that I disagree with, no, no, can't abide by that. Can't handle that. Can't can't live like that. Yeah. That's a, that's what so it's going to be. Fired, like, I'm gonna get fired going out my way. Yeah, if my shit don't work. I can sleep at night. I can live with myself. But if I do all the shit you want to do and I get fired, no, I can't. That that just don't sleep you know well with me. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE. 
at Chris B. Giannini at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.